So there's a kind of injury that vegans may actually be more susceptible to than animal eaters. And it's not as a result of any kind of deficiency, uh, quite the opposite. It's more so as a result of our increased athletic abilities, um, our increased physical energy, a uh, victim of our success, so to speak. Uh, so I'm gonna explain that to you in a second, tell you what happened to me and what you could do to prevent this kind of injury. Uh, but first of all, I just wanna confess that I almost didn't wanna talk about this publicly uh, because when I tell you how I injured myself, it's gonna make me look kind of dumb. Uh, it's gonna make veganism look good. It's gonna make me look kind of stupid. And as the founder of a company called Vegan Brain Food, um, I'm not trying to make myself look unnecessarily dumb. <laughs> However, I thought about it and you know, at the end of the day, the reason that uh, Vegan Brain and Body Boost is good for your brain has nothing to do with me or anyone for that matter. It's just simple biology and a role that these amino acids play within our cells, uh, which in a nutshell is basically they help our cells increase our internal production of ATP, which is adenosine triphosphate, um, also known as the cellular currency of energy. Um, so when you increase the energy available to your brain cells, uh, according to the peer-reviewed science, the placebo-controlled studies done on vegans and vegetarians, apparently you increase your working intelligence and memory. Uh, it's not very surprising. It's the same reason that increasing ATP to your muscle cells increases your athletic abilities uh, because your muscle cells can do more. But your brain cells are extremely energy hungry. Uh, your brain is 2% of your body weight, but it uses 20% uh, of all the energy your body requires. And cells basically run off of ATP and glucose. So anyways, I digress. The bigger picture is that there's people who are a lot smarter than me who are a lot more educated and a lot more experienced than me in various fields of knowledge, who have made mistakes that are a lot dumber than what I'm about to tell you. And the moral of the story is we need to be able to separate the evidence and the data uh, from the person communicating it because humans are fallible. At the end of the day, we can make mistakes. Um, but if we wanna make sure that we're not misinformed, especially with what's going on in the world right now, um, we need to focus on the evidence, focus on the data. All right, so let me tell you what happened to me. So I was here in this very park doing my favorite kind of exercise, uh, which is running up and down hills, uh, this specific uh, hill right here, um, which is, I don't know what it looks like on camera perspective wise, but it's relatively steep when you run up it many times and at a fast speed. Um, I'm gonna make a whole video about hill runs because this is by far the best form of exercise for fat burning uh, for numerous reasons. I'll explain that separately in the video. But anyways, what was happening that day is um, I had come here around sunset um, with this cutie pie right here, my son, Lubu. And um, the thing about this neighborhood is, uh, this is Scarborough, Toronto, this is coyote country. So if you come too close to sunrise, um, that's when the coyotes love to come out. And uh, I'm not really concerned about a coyote eating my puppy because he's about twice the size <laughs> of a coyote. It's more so he's a threat to them or if they do get into a fight, you know, they could get injured. So in any case, I had come, uh, given myself enough time to get the workout in um, before it got too close to sunset. Sorry, did I say sunrise earlier? And I saw a couple of my neighbors in the park and I just moved into this neighborhood. So being an extrovert, being a friendly person, actually they called me over. So I, we were shooting the shit for a bit. Um, I drive an electric car, they asked me about electric cars. The second you ask me about electric cars, I'm gonna go off on it because uh, not just because of the climate emergency, but because electric cars are the fucking best. And so I can give you an honest answer if <laughs> you're asking me how it drives and shit. But anyways, long story short, by the time I was like, oh guys, I gotta get to this workout before it gets dark, um, it was it was pushing it. It was pushing it really close to sunset. And I'm like, fuck, I really wanna get this workout in, um, but I don't want to risk it too much. So what I did was I went to this hill um, you know, and I basically did my entire workout, but sprinting. Um, sprinting up and down this hill. I was like, you know what? I wanna do 15 reps of this. I only have X amount of time, so let me get it in quick. Um, and you know what? After the workout, I was fine. Um, of course, doing a workout that intense, you always tell yourself, all right, you know, I better stretch really well after this. Of course, being a fool, I never stretch. I never stretch enough. I only stretch on the weekends generally. Um, and that's not enough when you work out this much, um, working out six days a week nowadays. And the day before that was my bench day. And since the pandemic hit, I've been doing bench with free weights at home. And that involves lifting these two 85 pound weights, which is 170 pounds put together. Um, lifting them up just to get them onto the bench is pretty fucking stressful on your lower back. So this was really, really, really fucking terrifying. The next morning, 
The next day I was taking a shower and just got a shooting pain in my back, like extremely painful. Like it hurt to stay standing. Like I was trying to lean over. I was like, oh fuck, what the fuck did I do to myself? Um, really worried initially it was nerve damage, which would have been, you know, nerves don't necessarily heal. So thankfully it wasn't that. It was just like super inflamed lower back and it took several days. Well, over the course of that day, it was just massively painful, massively inflamed. Um, CBD really helped. Actually, THC even helped as well. Cannabinoids help better than Advil. Um, and eventually it got a bit better after a few days. For a few weeks, it was still sore and painful. Um, but eventually it went away and I'll tell you, talk about how it went away. But first I wanna just say that, how does this relate to veganism? Um, the reason it relates is that if you've seen Game Changers, uh, you understand that because of numerous physiological processes at work, a plant-based diet gives you increased energy, which you can then take advantage of on a football field, uh, in the gym, wherever it is you're doing. Now, you know, when I first started Game Changers, um, I remember I was doing like eight sets of arms, like bicep, tricep, I do them on the same day, I do them twice a week. And I saw the Game Changers. Um, you know, there's that scene where the star James Wilkes is doing the ropes and he's like, I can just keep going. like. I'm not tired <laughs> and he goes on for an hour etc and i realized that that's what i was doing with in the gym you know we always think of endurance as something that applies to marathons that applies to you know long distance running hey i ran a marathon uh never do that again running the marathon is fucking stupid speaking of stupid ways to injure yourself running on concrete for 42 kilometers just pounding your fucking knees and your back on concrete bad idea you want to run a long distance do it on grass you know do it somewhere soft I digress. The point is that once I realized I have these abilities, I have this increased potential, it helped me in the gym. I was like, yeah, I could just do more sets because I can't necessarily lift. I would hit a plateau where I can't lift more weight or I can't do more reps, but I wasn't tired at the end of the workout. So I could just do more sets. <laughs> and lo and behold, it, I get stronger. Same thing with these workouts. When I first got here, I was doing, I was going up the hill eight times. Um, I was being cautious. I was being smart in that sense. Um, and then once I was like, okay, I can do eight, and then I went to 10, but yeah, 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 now I'm up to 15 reps here. Um, but just because we have these increased abilities, you can't neglect fucking stretching. Let's talk about being a fool. I've done this to myself before playing football in the winter time, which, you know, football, you're just sprinting from a standing position. Worse, even worse than that, doing it in the cold here in Canada, playing winter football. Um, I've pulled my lower back before and it's a really painful injury. Your hamstrings connected to your lower back. So the bottom line, if you're trying to avoid injury is, I don't know who needs to hear this, but if you're sore, if you're injured, whether it's from exercise, whether it's from sitting in a chair too much, you can get uh, sore and you can get injuries from sitting for too long periods of time. Just resting is not gonna heal you. Just resting is not good enough. You need to stretch and strengthen those key ligaments, those key body parts, whatever it is that's injured, okay? That is how you heal. As a doctor explained to me once, when you injure muscles, look at this guy watching me there. <laughs> As a doctor explained to me once, when you, when you injure muscle fiber, they he, scar tissue heals on them in all sorts of weird, jagged, diagonal ways. But your muscle fibers are meant to be parallel, right? So if you want them to heal the way they're supposed to be, if you heal them diagonally and if you heal them asymmetrically, then you're gonna walk weird. If you hurt one side of your body, the other side's gonna overcompensate puppy baby boy over here I'm gonna walk back closer to he tore one ACL then he tore the other same thing humans always do because they overcompensate with the other one you have to heal them in parallel um, so I'm just gonna highlight a couple two of the body parts that we most commonly injure what I did lower back and Achilles tendon and talk about how to strengthen them as far as strengthening as far as stretching your uh, Achilles tendon that's basically stretching your calves that's kind of obvious I'll put some diagrams on screen um, as far as strengthening it, it's really easy. Go to a stairwell, go to any stairs, and do this. What you should not do is give yourself this stupid ass haircut that I gave myself. Speaking of bad decisions, if you're wondering why I'll be wearing a hat for the next few videos, look at this shit. I fucked up. <laughs> I used the wrong razor on the side and then I went all around. And honestly, I invite you to make fun of me. Um, I don't have thin skin. I actually laugh the hardest sometimes at jokes at my expense. So the funniest comment here making fun of my haircut, uh, I'll give you some free vegan brain food. The other one, which is your lower back, I don't even need to give you a diagram or show you. Uh, there's a there's a machine in the gym where basically you, there's an incline here, your body's here, this is your upper back, this is your legs, and you just dip. Raise yourself like this, 
and then once you get stronger do it with weight be lifting weight that's my favorite one um, for the lower back if the gyms are open again where you are um, so lucky the gyms just reopen here um, and there's lots of other ways which uh, you could Google <laughs> Um, I'm not going to show you every single one of them here. Um, you know, one of the reasons I don't make videos nearly often enough is because I over edit the shit out of them. And I'm like, oh, I look at every one on my list like that's going to take too long. And uh, I'm trying to do more videos just like this, improvising. Uh, well, not improvising. I know what I wanted to talk to you about, but I'm not reading off a script or anything like that. Um, and I'm not going to edit the fuck out of this. So if you really want to prevent injury, then look into those body parts that you have that are... Uh, that are, that are the most sore, that you're putting the most work into, especially for um, everyone out there who's doing bench press. This muscle right here, this muscle right here, there's a lot of great resources on it. Um, if you're going hard with bench press, you're very likely to injure this. And if you wanna get strong in your chest, um, you need to make sure that this muscle group is, is good. So that's it for me. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this. I'm actually gonna be doing a lot more videos on self-care, on fitness. Uh, in the future, I'll be making a whole playlist on it. So you haven't already, um, be sure to subscribe. Um, also, of course, subscribing helps my animal rights. Dedicated videos reach non-vegans. It's not really helpful if we're preaching to the choir, um, but YouTube's algorithm is based off of, in large part off of subscribers. So make sure you do that. Get your work in. Don't be like me. I know a lot of people are, are thinking always about making those gains, about being in good shape, about you know getting the workout done. And then we forget about something that's equally important. If you're flexing your muscles all the time, not flexing them in the mirror, I mean flexing them to run or lift weights or run up hills or whatever it is, um, you need to relax those muscles. You need to stretch them. So be balanced in that case. Um, I've been stretching and strengthening a hell of a lot more since this injury. I think it was a blessing in disguise and a feeling a hell of a lot better. And now I'm able to, to get stronger um, because I'm taking care of my body. So take care of your body and uh, have a beautiful day.